Laboratory and greenhouse research are important components of an effective plant pathology research program. My name is Frankie Crutcher, and I'm the lead investigator for the plant pathology program at the Eastern Ag Research Center. Today, I will discuss some of the activities that our program performs, both in the summer and winter seasons, in our indoor facilities. One of our most important functions is to perform plant disease diagnostics for the public. Local farmers, crop advisors, research scientists, and others bring in samples of plants displaying disease symptoms, and we observe them, both the plants as a whole and under the microscope for disease signs, symptoms, and pathogen structures. An accurate idea is essential for making good recommendations to farmers and homeowners. We also look at fungal pathogen populations and their effect on disease. This requires us to identify the pathogens both by physical characteristics such as spore shape or colony color, and by molecular methods such as gene sequencing. We can then take these fungi and test them for the ability to cause disease and observe how severe the symptoms are in the greenhouse. With this information, we can test how agronomic practices such as rotations can affect these populations and the severity of the disease they cause in order to make better management recommendations. We work with plant breeders to test varieties for resistance and the development of marker-assisted selection of resistance genes. This requires growing varieties in the greenhouse to produce seed for the next generation or to inoculate with different pathogens to measure disease resistance. Because of this, soil must be sterile for these experiments and the pathogen needs to be destroyed in the plant material and soil when we are done. We use a soil sterilization cart in which steam is pumped from a boiler into the cart, which contains our contaminated materials, for several hours to days. Once completed, materials can be disposed of safely with no risk of introducing these pathogens to our field sites. We also test pathogens for development of fungicide resistance. This is done both through PCR and by growing the pathogen on increasing amounts of the fungicide on growth media. Here we can measure the effect of the fungal growth or germination of spores. If the pathogens are less inhibited by these fungicides, this can indicate that resistance has or is developing and will help us make better recommendations for fungicide applications to farmers. It is important for our summer field experiments to grow large amounts of disease inoculum in the winter months. We usually grow our fungal pathogens on corn or barley that has been sterilized. The fungus is allowed to grow for several weeks in a spawn bag, which prevents growth of contaminating molds, yeast, and bacteria while allowing air movement in and out of the bag. In an average year, we will grow more than 200 pounds of inoculum. Once a good amount of growth is established, the inoculum is removed from the spawn bag and dried in paper bags in the greenhouse. All materials used in this process are thoroughly sterilized before they are disposed of. This dried material is either spread in the field early in the season or is planted with the seed. At the Eastern Ag Research Center, we have modern and well-equipped facilities to perform all of these functions. We have also received funding from several agencies, including the MSU College of Agriculture, USA Dry Pea and Lentil, and the U.S. Wheat and Barley Scab Initiative to purchase new equipment for these activities. I would like to thank the EARC Plant Pathology Program staff and students for all their hard work this year.